Can we start the case now? Yes. So here is a patient who is having 81 year old smoker coming to emergency room with acute onset of breathlessness since last uh, 30 minutes. He had past history of several episodes of same complaint. In the past, he had admitted to this hospital previously also. So first we connect the patient to the monitor. Yes, we have connected already. Uh, so in my initial 10 second assessment, I have found that the patient is conscious and oriented. Yes. He is obeying to my commands okay. and he is speaking in full sentences in a normal voice. Okay. Now, uh, sir, can you tell me about the airway? Airway is stable, but he is having uh, breathlessness. Okay, so are there any secretions or frothing in the mouth? Secretions are there, but it is not obstructing the airway. Okay. Uh, can you tell me about the respiratory rate and the Respir or saturation? Respiratory rate is 25, saturation is 81. Okay, 81 is on room air or is it? It is on room air, we have not started oxygen. Okay, so kindly prop up the patient and... So we have propped up the patient. And apply the Hudson mask. So uh, start oxygen, 6 litre oxygen. So she is our EMT, she is starting oxygen, 6 okay. litres as per your advice. We have started 6 litre, oxygen started. Now, if the respiratory rate is not improving, then it is not improving. Uh, then we can start uh, nebula corticosteroid nebulization. Nebulization. We have to start nebulization. nebulization. Uh, nebulization. Okay. So, what nebulization you want to start? Uh, 100 mg IV hydrocortisone. There is IV nebulization. Oh, nebulization. Uh, hydro hydrocortisone. We start salbutamol, salbutamol. So, we start salbutamol nebulization. For bronchodilation. Okay, it's a bronchodilator. Okay. Start. So, we have started. Okay. Uh, our target is uh, more than 95%, 94% oxygen saturation. Okay. We'll see. We have to wait for some time. Okay, it reached 90. Okay. What else you want to know? Uh, how is the BP and the heart BP rate? is 90 by 67. Heart rate is 119. So, from this we can understand he is having hypotension and tachycardia. Okay. So, secure two large IV uh, so gold cannulas. Uh, uh, 16 gauge or 18 gauge is, uh, okay. uh, is preferred. Okay. So, and we have put uh, that is the orange or green color okay. one. Okay. And uh, start uh, 1 litre IV bolus cell, normal saline. So, we have started. So, uh, now has the BP and heart rate improved? We have to wait. Okay, it's improving. It's increased to 98, 92 by 67. Okay. Now, it okay. has become 100 by 71. And uh, can you tell me about the, if the chest rise is adequate or inadequate? Chest rate is adequate, but uh, there is severe wheeze uh, after nebulization, it has decreased. It has decreased. Uh, and bilateral chest movement is equal? Bilateral chest movements are equal. Okay. And are there any distended veins or use of any accessory muscles? The accessory muscles are used, but there is no distended vein. Okay. Uh, now, uh, so the, the wheezing has controlled, so It is reduced. It's reduced. So, uh, has the patient come with fever? Yes, he has got fever. So, I would like to start uh, 1 gram IV paracetamol. Okay, please start on paracetamol IV. 1 gram IV paracetamol. Give one. Okay. Started. Uh, started. Okay. So, is there any associated chest pain for the patient? There is no chest pain. Okay. Uh, uh, now, I would like to see the chest x-ray. Okay. You will take a chest x-ray. The chest x-ray is seen there. Okay, from this uh, x-ray, uh, I would, there are some infiltrates in the lower zone okay. of the left lung. Okay. Uh, so, I am suspecting a streptococcus pneumonia infection, but okay. to confirm, I would like to order a sputum culture. Okay, that will take okay. and send. Uh, so, if uh, the sputum culture is coming around a rusty colored sputum, then uh, my uh, diagnosis would further uh, suspect a streptococcus pneumonia infection. Okay. But still to confirm a CBC, uh, I would like to order. Okay. And if WBC, WBC counts are elevated, 14,000. Okay. And neutrophil? Neutrophils are 90%. Okay. So, I think bacterial infection is the way to go. Okay. And uh, can you tell me about the Procal values? Procalcitonin is 10. So, then more Procal also suspects more bacterial okay. infection. Okay. Uh, anything about the ABG? ABG shows respiratory acidosis with partial compensation. Okay. 
so uh, now i i think we have come to a conclusion that it is a bacterial inf- pneumonia due to bacterial infection and mostly streptococcus pneumonia okay and does this patient have uh, any underlying comorbidities he is a smoker chronic smoker he is 81 year old he is a diabetic okay so if he is a diabetic uh, so he is having certain comorbidities then i would like to start him on uh, ceftriaxone okay uh, 125 mg twice daily 1 gram Oh, one one gram, gram twice huh. daily for a week. Okay. And along with a macrolide like azithromycin. Okay. Uh, first day we can give five hundred mg and continue with two fifty mg okay. for a week. Okay. 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 Uh, then uh, I would like to see the X-ray once again uh, in a week. Okay. So uh, if and within six weeks, I uh, maybe we would see some improvement. Okay. You want to review case. the patient now before discussing the case. Okay. So what is it? What are the current things you have? To, you have to tell me. You ask the doctor and tell me whether okay. the disease has come down. So after adequate treatment, whether the patient is improved or not, you have to okay. tell us. So uh, the, I will check if the disease has decreased or not. The disease has significantly reduced, reduced. in the lower okay. side. So that means our uh, nebulization has uh, helped the uh, wheezing to be okay, reduced. Okay. Okay. And now, uh, for I would like to percuss tidal percussion to okay. identify. Okay. So, uh, can, uh, yeah, you can, you can, you can. So. So if the dullness has uh, shifted along with my percussion mm. then the uh, problem would be below the diaphragm mm-hmm. and if as if it has not shifted then it will be above the diaphragm okay you want so to tell uh, dull- pneumonia is there that's why percussion dullness percussion. will persist there persist there okay. it is below the diaphragm it can below shift down below the diaphragm okay. it can shift okay. down so now I, the dullness i have uh, seen that it has shifted okay. so it's below the diaphragm okay so can we discuss the case now so yes. you understood okay this is how you are going to manage the case in emergency room who is having a pneumonia okay so what is this case now what is your final diagnosis my final diagnosis is a pneumonia due to bacterial infection uh, most likely streptococcus so 81 year old male smoker diabetic patients come diabetic patient come to emergency room with acute breathlessness mm-hmm. and he is having right sided consolidation as per your x ray your procalcitonin is high your counts are elevated and uh, you are given nebulization yeah, and he is improved in his saturation okay so why he has improved in his saturation pneumonia as such will not improve with your just nebulization so what else might have been mm, there some in, uh, inflammatory condition some underlying disease is already there in the lungs what is that he is a chronic smoker he is having type 2 respiratory failure with partial compensation so what it can be it can be a copd it can be it can be a copd he is a Emphysema. chronic smoker he is having a respiratory acidosis which is partially compensated so immediately it should come to your mind that patient is having copd with acute infective exacerbation that is a diagnosis in this patient so what are the two types of uh, copds you know there are two types of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease what are the two types two types emphysema, emphysema chronic emphysema and chronic bronchitis two two condition chronic emphysema chronic bronchitis chronic bronchitis will be predominantly cough emphysema will be predominantly breathlessness so that's why i told in the history past history of repeated episodes of breathlessness that is very very important he he was admitted in this hospital repeatedly in the past with same type of complaint so he is having chronic breathlessness and repeatedly he was admitted to hospital that all goes in favor of a copd condition okay what is copd comparing with asthma what is copd if you compare with asthma what is it it's obstructive disorder both are obstructive yeah. asthma is obstructive copd is also obstructive so mainly due to smoking asthma smoking is not the trigger copd smoking is okay. a trigger then what else Asthma starts Asthma. in the childhood. COPD starts in the later age. Then there is a hyperinflation of the lungs in both the have place. hyperinflation during episodes. Both have hyperinflation, but COPD is a persistent problem. So it is progressing every day. It is increasing. Whereas asthma, it is an intermittent problem. In between, asthma recovers completely. So that is the main difference. Okay. So whenever you ask ask a history in this patient, you have to ask whether the patient is having continuously this symptom. or intermittently is having symptom okay so if intermittently then that goes in most mostly goes in favor of 
intermittently means asthma. Asthma. It's a continuous symptom means goes in favor of emphysema. Oh, COPD or, or emphysema. Okay. okay. But if you once the patient is stabilized, improved, you have to send this patient for PFT, pulmonary function test. What you'll see in asthma? In there also you see obstruction. FEV so one FEV1 will be reduced. Will be reduced. Okay, FEV1 will be reduced in both conditions. But after nebulization, what happened to asthma? It'll asthma improves significantly more than 50% improvement will be there whereas in COPD improvement will be very minimal yes. okay so PFT will help you to tell whether it is asthma or COPD okay so this patient has come to emergency room with acute breathlessness after starting oxygen he has not improved okay but after starting nebulization his saturation is improved how many nebulizations you have to give normally in a uh, COPD or asthma acute exacerbation normally one nebulization will not be enough. Here, patient has improved with one nebulization. But that is only because it's a, a clinical scenario, setup scenario like this. Normal practice, patient will never improve like this. So, one or two nebulization you have to give. Okay, so first nebulization, nebulization. second nebulization, third nebulization, sometimes they'll improve. What are the two drugs we have used here? Salbutamol, Salbutamol and, and, as a meter dose inhaler okay. and hydro. No, no, it is nebulization. nebulization. Meter dose inhaler is spray. Okay, and uh, hydrocortisone. Salbutamol and ipratropium bromide. These are the two drugs we routinely use, salbutamol and ipratropium bromide. What is hydrocortisone? It's an injectable drug. Okay. okay. So, salbutamol and ipratropium bromide is given for nebulization that both the drugs have got action on the your bronchial. It will try to dilate, dilate, the, dilate the bronchioles. Okay. So, that is given. First thing is you give three nebulizations. Okay. Then what, what else you give after that? Suppose the patient does not improve with your nebulization. What else you can start? You can start BiPAP. BiPAP. NIV. No, uh, what is that NIV? Non-invasive non ventilation. What is the action of that? Uh, that will uh, cause improve the, uh, like dilate the airway and improve. Okay. So, this is, here we are giving oxygen without any pressure. It's connected to the uh, oxygen uh, port and oxygen is coming without any pressure. In BiPAP Bi or NIV, it will put a pressure and make the oxygen forcefully inside your lungs and there is a uh, there is a pressure this one uh, uh, that is inspiration pressure and expression and that you can put and you can improve the uh, saturation now i have talked about abg what abg finding you get in uh, asthma what abg finding you get in copd what so is it uh, if the patient is uh, he is breathing faster hmm. Then there will be more CO2 release, so there will be respiratory alkalosis. Okay. Acutely, if somebody is having breathlessness, so you are breathing very fast, your carbon dioxide will be washed out, your oxygen will be increased. So, you develop respiratory alkalosis. Somebody is having acute breathlessness, first response is respiratory alkalosis. alkalosis. But after some time, uh, uh, you are having uh, V's, your airways are narrowed, so oxygen will not enter to the airway. Okay. Then what will happen to the oxygen? Then the oxygen will oxygen be Oxygen reduced. Okay. So, what type of respiratory failure you are getting? Then it will be acidosis. First one is oxygen First, is reduced. Okay. That is called as type 1 or type 2? Type, type 1. 1. Hypoxemia is type 1 respiratory failure. After some time, patient is having carbon dioxide retention. Like a COPD patient, it's a long term process. So, their carbon dioxide levels will be increased. So, carbon dioxide retention occurs. Then it will become type 2 respiratory failure okay. if the carbon dioxide levels are elevated what kidney will try to do it will try to uh, it will try to excrete it out. it will try Via to retain bicarbonate. bicarbonate okay so bicarbonate level will increase you are so when the carbon dioxide level increases ph will decrease when the bicarbonate increases again ph will come back to near normal that is that's what i told patient is having respiratory acidosis with partial compensation okay so any patient who is having respiratory acidosis means it's a chronic process but in asthma what will what will happen it will be only type 1 type respiratory one. copd it will be type 2 respiratory failure with acidosis with partial compensation okay so that's what we are taking abg now we have discussed about wbc count why it is important how do you differentiate between asthma and copd in wbc count Asthma is always a 
it's a hypersensitivity it is an reaction. inflammatory reaction it's a hypersensitivity reaction so lymphocyte, so, so lymphocyte or eosinophil count will be lymphocyte. elevated okay whereas in copd it's almost a infective Infected. exacerbation so what will be elevated there neutrophils neutrophils will be elevated so in that sense it also help you to make a diagnosis then you are asked about procalcitonin what is procalcitonin procalcitonin you will also increase only mostly in bacteria so bacterial it's infection procalcitonin will be elevated so here it is then that means a local infection okay. is there so in the lungs okay so that also will tell you whether it's a bacterial, bacterial infection or viral infection so you should know what are the reasons for an infective exacerbation in copd what are the reasons so normal lung somebody is having a normal chest normal chest means there is no past history of any any disease in the lungs suddenly is coming with a community acquired infection what is a common organism Streptococcus it is streptococcus it is gram positive cocci mm-hmm. okay but whereas in a copd patient or ild patient or some other lung disease patient coming with a respiratory disorder then what are the infections it can be atypical it can be h influenza and pneumococcus sorry h influenza and moraxella Moraxi. with your streptococcus so it can be gram positive or gram negative that is the main difference that you should understand somebody is having a acute infection from community without any major lung disease it can be gram positive somebody is having a already existing lung disease he is developing a disease then it can be gram positive or gram negative so depending on that uh, that uh, bacterial flora you have to select your antibiotic okay now you have a patient who is having asthma with acute exacerbation will you start antibiotic or not that is the first question for asthma we won't we, start. we no need to start it is not a infective not exacerbation infective. so we no, no need to start any antibiotic whereas in a copd patient we will start we have to start so to start antibiotic or antiviral okay sometimes you can get h1n1 infection can occur in many patients so how, how can do uh, a, a viral pcr to check pcr can be done but it will take time no nasopharyngeal okay. swab swab can be taken that will t- give immediate result immediate. for all these things so if that is a bacterial infection here the counts are elevated procalcitonin is high you are thinking it can be a gram positive or gram negative organism uh, depending on the clinical scenario what antibiotic you have selected uh, i selected a third generation ceftriaxone ceftriaxone what is the coverage uh, it's a uh, gram negative it is predominantly gram negative but uh, you have you already know that now there is a gram positive possibility yeah. gram negative possibility so you have to cover gram positive ceftriaxone will not cover gram, gram positive, positive like other anti- antibiotic it, it has got some coverage mm-hmm. okay so what else you can add you have, uh, you have told some other drug what is that azithromycin azithromycin Macro- azithromycin is a macular it has got a predominantly gram positive gram coverage positive. and your ceftriaxone covers gram negative so that is called as empirical therapy in pneumonia uh, as a first line therapy it, it, select a gram positive drug you select a gram negative drug and start the treatment now you have talked about a typical pneumonia what is a typical pneumonia a typical pneumonia is usually uh, the, the infiltrate will not be uh, like in a zone it will be interstitial infiltrate okay. and it's usually caused by chlamydia legionella mycoplasma okay and uh, to detect it you can use uh, like viral antigen testing okay that will specifically you, what you have told is typical means it will be only one area a yeah, typical means it throughout but we don't have a chest x ray a patient is coming to emergency room or in a primary care setting secondary care setting where x rays are not uh, available like that like this okay so what you do clinical symptoms are very important what is typical pneumonia typical there will be fever typical chills. symptoms will come fever high degree fever high degree chills fever, cough, cough. Uh, blood in sputum all these things are typical symptoms a typical symptoms are diarrhea hyponatremia Hypo- altered behavior carditis these, uh, carditis hemolytic anemia okay hemolytic anemia Hemolytic. these are the atypical symptoms so you have to always look for whether the typical symptoms are there or atypical symptoms are there then suppose a typical pneumonia you are suspecting among these two antibiotics you started which antibiotic will help you have started two antibiotic azithromycin and ceftriaxone which antibiotic will help in atypical pneumonia hmm? ceftriaxone no no azithromycin. azithromycin so azithromycin will help you in a typical pneumonia so any pneumonia coming to emergency room if you have started first as a first line drug you have, you have selected uh, ceftriaxone with uh, azithromycin azithromycin has got a predominant gram positive coverage and it also covers uh, against uh, your uh, what is it uh, 
a typical organism. Atypical. Okay. You have a do you have a, a true broad spectrum antibiotic which covers all organism in the lungs? Amoxicillin. Amoxicillin is predominantly gram positive. Some gram negative is there, but it is predominantly gram positive. Gram positive. Uh, so which is a true broad spectrum antibiotic? Maybe some tetracycline, doxycycline. Doxycycline has got very good coverage, but it is not a, in the in, in that sense it is not a true and uh, true broad spectrum. It is levofloxin or moxifloxin. It's a respiratory condition. So, what is, so what is the coverage of levofloxin or moxifloxin? It you covers cover both. It covers gram, gram positive. positive. It covers gram negative. negative. It covers atypical. It covers anaerobes. Okay. okay. It covers almost everything in the lungs. That's why any respiratory infection, we always try to start yeah, levofloxin or moxo, moxifloxin. Moxifloxin. Not offloxin. Offloxin, levofloxin, uh, offloxin and uh, ciprofloxin are below diaphragm. Levofloxin, moxifloxin, <coughs> above the diaphragm. Okay. Now the patient has improved. You have seen that the patient has improved. Everything is okay. Pulse rate has become normal. Saturation is normal. But still we are continuing oxygen. Okay. So can we reduce the oxygen? Now you understood that this is COPD. Do you want this much oxygenation in this patient? Uh, when it is improved, then we can reduce it. No, my question is, you already know that this patient is having COPD. COPD. Now you have made the oxygen saturation to 96. Mm. What will happen to the patient if you keep like that? Keep it like that. Then there will be hyperinflation. See, this much high saturation he never experienced in his life okay. is always low. Okay. Now you are trying to increase the saturation. You are trying to wash out all carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. What brainstem will think? Everything is okay and it will stop breathing. Okay. So you have to immediately, respiratory, uh, respiratory central will go to depression. So immediately you have to reduce the saturation to 90, 91, 92. That is enough. Mm -hmm. So you have to stop the oxygen now. Okay. So you have to stop the, stop oxygen. the oxygen. So we have to keep the saturation around 90. That's all. Okay. okay. Not more than that. 84, 85, 84 was the uh, saturation initially. Without knowing proper history, we have corrected it. We have over corrected it actually. Okay. So we should reduce to 90. That's that is more than sufficient. Okay. Now this patient will have some some pulmonary hypertension because of chronic obstructive airway disease. How do you treat that? Hypertension. We can uh, try to give him some drugs like acetaminophen. No, no. It is pulmonary hypertension. It is pulmonary hypertension secondary to lung disease. Okay. okay. So in that condition, you have to give minimal oxygen. Minimal oxygen is long-term oxygen therapy. What is long-term oxygen therapy? So A you give two dose, long, lower dose, time. two liters oxygen continuously, we have to give. Okay. So that prevents the pulmonary hypertension. That prevents right ventricular failure. Okay. That is called as right ventricular failure secondary to lung disease is called as core pulmonary. Okay. So we have to treat that. We have to prevent that. So to prevent that, we have to start oxygen. Okay. Now I want to discharge the patient. Patient is better now. We want to discharge the patient. So if you yeah. give, if you don't give oxygen, patient will die. If mm. you give more oxygen, then also patient will die. So you have to, uh, you have to give play a in between. Dose okay. For a longer period okay. Of time. So low dose for a longer period that is called as LTOT, LT. long term oxygen therapy. Now I want to discharge the patient. So uh, first I will make sure his respiratory rate, BP, everything, everything is normal. Is so the heart rate is 85, saturation is 90, uh, uh, BP is normal. Mm -hmm. So yeah, then I'll advise him to uh, continue on this antibiotic. So antibiotic we want to make orally. What oral antibiotic you can give? We have discussed so many things. Now I want to discharge. You cannot give septic on orally. Mm -hmm. So you cannot uh, uh, like... Amoxicillin. Uh, so you want to give amoxicillin? 500 mg. So either five, you want to give 500 mg uh, amoxicillin th three times. We have already discussed that it is only gram positive coverage. Okay, so fluoroquinone. Fluoroquinone. Fluoro so we give levofloxin, levofloxin 500 mg once daily for next 5 or 6 five days seven. that we can discharge with that antibiotic. But he is already having a COPD. Okay. COPD history is there. He is having lung disease. How do you manage that? After nebulization, he has improved. You have seen that. Mm -hmm. Now if you discharge him, he will come back with same breathing difficulty. So, how do you discharge him? We can tell him to continue using salvitamol. You can ask the patient to either buy a nebulization, nebulization and uh, take home. take home and continue it on nebulization. But he is having a chronic process. So, everywhere he cannot take nebulization. Advise him to stop smoking as well. He is not smoking now. No. So, what do you do? What is other device which will help you to correct this problem? 
meter dose inhaler the meter dose inhaler is we have to advise what meter dose inhaler you advise to the patient 2.5 mg salute meter dose inhaler sir like a puff, puff given to the patient okay uh, each meter dose uh, when you take a puff that deliver some amount of drug to the patient okay so what are the drugs you advise that is a question salbutamol is a short acting drug if you take that immediately it act and it, it, it after 6 hours the effect will come down so you need to give a long acting salmetrol. drug salmetrol Sa- either salmetrol or formatrol can be salmetrol or formatrol okay so ipatropium bromide can be given as a mdi okay. or tiatropium bromide can be given now should we give steroid for this patient now i think we can stop the steroid you have already given steroid mm. uh, for too long then it will cause immunosuppression okay so long term steroids are not indicated not. but you can even give a puff of uh, steroid bidazonide or something can be given okay now what diet you advise for this patient uh, a low fat diet with the uh, and high carbs high carbohydrate mm. you might have learned in your uh, biochemistry class that uh, after taking carbohydrate lot of carbohydrate the end product of carbohydrate metabolism is what is it end product of carbohydrate metabolism is carbon dioxide and water okay, okay. that's why in a copd patient we never give we never advise a high carbohydrate diet you advise a high protein, protein. diet high protein diet high potassium diet to to a patient like this why potassium is important to de- uh, in decrease the risk of any myopathy no when you are giving and nebulization when you are giving nebulizer salbutamol nebulization the potassium deficiency will occur that's why we are giving high potassium and potassium is required for your muscle to breathe more powerfully you will require potassium that's why we give high protein high potassium low carbohydrate diet so that is very important okay so can we discharge the patient yeah okay thank you